for sorrow and pain, tears of frustration as love passed me by, until the master heard my heart's cry. I want to welcome each one to our midweek service tonight, this last service of 2022. 
Let's all stand together, all of the building tonight. We're going to sing out unto the Lord this great hymn of the faith, Victory in Jesus. We're going to sing the first and second verses. Let's sing it together. Brother Holly's sick tonight, so we're filling in for him. You pray for him. Give it all you've got tonight. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the Sing it out on the chorus. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing on the second together I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how we made the lame to walk again and sing it now good come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. On the chorus, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood amen let's remain standing for a word of prayer and again i want to welcome each one tonight to our midweek service and we trust that you've had a wonderful wonderful christmas and of course many of you were here for christmas sunday morning and we had a wonderful service and a great crowd a great spirit on Christmas Sunday morning, and I'm so grateful uh, for that wonderful service. And then tonight is the last service of 2022. Sunday morning will be January 1st. It'll be the new year, and so we're looking forward to celebrating that. But I'm thankful that you'll be able to be with us. It's such a busy season, and, uh, and I appreciate you making time, making a point to be with us. And I realize that uh, family gatherings are still going on, and and all the different Christmas activities. Matter of fact, we had my wife and I, we uh, celebrated Christmas with her family yesterday all day. And so I know everything is still going on in that area. But uh, good to see you tonight. We've had a great time of uh, outreach tonight, going out into a couple different areas, really, and passing out uh, door hangers and knocking doors, witness, trying to uh, be a witness to people and give them the gospel presentation on the door hanger. And, uh, and so we're grateful that we got to do that. Let's pray for much fruit from that. And then also let's pray for the service tonight that God would bless in a wonderful way. Let's pray for our nursery and our wiggle worms tonight. Kids for Truth program as they're over across the, in the, the breezeway in the educational building. That God would bless them with a wonderful time over there. As we said already, Brother Holly's sick. And so we want to pray for him tonight. And Miss Holly's okay, but Brother Holly's down sick with the coronavirus. And so hopefully he'll be better before Sunday. And the, uh, the, uh, I know the quarantine time is very short now and, and so forth. And so hopefully he'll be fine. I spoke with him today, and I think he's going to be just fine. So let's pray for him. We appreciate his son, Micah, and uh, Miss Elizabeth filling in for him tonight with the team. So let's pray for all the ministries tonight and that God would uh, be magnified through the service. If you have a prayer request or a need or you want the Lord to help you tonight, would you raise your hand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessings uh, tonight. Uh, Matt Honey, would you come up here? I know you're multitasking, brother. You're doing the sound system from back there. And uh, if you'll come up here and lead us to the Lord in prayer uh, as we go to the Lord together in prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for being back in church again tonight. To be, it's good to be among God's people, and 
uh, to be among the Spirit of God. And Lord, we just want to pray that you'd meet with us tonight, meet our prayer requests. God, please be with those that are sick and afflicted and they can't be here tonight. God, we pray that you bless and uh, meet each one of them. And God, I pray for the teens tonight as they uh, go over to the other building, the young people in the other building. Just pray, God, that you bless all the activities tonight. Bless our pastor as he preaches. And Lord, we just want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And we want to thank you so much for being so good to us, meeting every need, and most of all, for giving us Jesus Christ to, to die for our sins and, and rising again from the dead and giving us hope. And Lord, we want to thank you for that. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. We're going to sing another song. I just keep trusting my Lord. We're going to sing through this twice. And I want you to sing out with all your heart as we sing it together tonight. <clears throat> I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives us Clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail. I just keep trusting my Lord, He will never fail. Think about it, He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on Him to the very dark in the sky or the heavenly trail I just keep trusting my Lord before we sing the next chorus they'll continue to play let me mention this trusting the Lord begins when when do we start trusting the moment that we get saved right we trust in the Lord to save us from our sins but does it stop there no, it just increases from there. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. Because there are dark clouds. And sometimes there's things we can't see for ourselves. We can't, we don't know what to do. We have to trust the Lord. But I don't know anything better that we can do than trust the Lord. And uh, you're singing great tonight. And I want us to do that one more time. Give it all you've got. Think about it as you're singing. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and He gives us song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend, I can count on Him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, He will never fail. Amen. Wonderful singing tonight, and I know that you're singing from your heart. We have a couple announcements really quickly tonight that I want to remind you of. Don't forget about our services on Sunday. It is the first Sunday of 2023. It's going to be great, and I want to encourage you to start the year. We're going to be having, Lord willing, a message on Sunday morning uh, that the Lord has you know, put in my heart several weeks ago. Uh, that, that we'll talk about something that will be geared to the new year and new year resolution type of idea. And uh, so I want to encourage you to be here for that. 11 o'clock, and uh, listen, don't go skydiving or nothing Sunday at 11 o'clock. You can do that the second day of the year. Let's put God first. Can I get an amen? Well, I don't know what you got on your agenda, your bucket list, your new year resolution, some, but whatever it is, let's put God first. And let's encourage others to do the same. And uh, perhaps you know somebody this, that they, they, they were in church. You know, it's so easy. You know, and, and, and we are. We're trying to reach people, you know, and you know this. We're not trying to go out 
when we go out knocking on doors, if we meet someone that goes to another church of like faith, in other words, they believe and they practice the same as we do according to the word of God, we're not, to, we're not, we're not going out and saying, hey, look, your church is horrible, your pastor is horrible, you know, let's come to Temple Baptist. You know, no, listen, I, I think and I believe with all my heart Temple Baptist is the greatest church in the world. I really believe that. But I'm not going to criticize another church just because we're trying to fill ours up. You know, that's not, that's not ethical, number one. Uh, and, uh, and I do not believe it's biblical. We're to go, you know, go out into all the world and preach the gospel. And so we're trying to reach people that are not saved and not in church, right? Now, if there's somebody looking for a church and they say, look, I've got to, I'm, I'm looking for a church. Now, that's when you say, come on, you know. But you're not try, we're not trying to pry them away from another place they're involved in. And so when you try to reach people that are not saved or not in church, what happens is uh, they're, they're not really rooted already. And so God bless us with people that are rooted, and they're here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night most of the time, and we're grateful for that. But people that are not in church, that are not saved, they're just in and out, and it takes them a while. And you think back when you first got saved or when you first started getting in church, were you there every time the doors were open? Probably not. It took you a little bit to get established and arrange your life around the work of the ministry, whatever you was involved in, the way you were serving the Lord. So we got to be patient. But this is a great time to reach out to somebody that's not, maybe not been in church for a while and say, hey, I want to encourage you to be at church and so forth. And so let's start it off in Sunday school. I got one amen out of that. And uh, let's be in Sunday school, adult Bible classes and the reason we call it adult Bible class, some people have no clue. You know, you make, we've got people uh, all over the area from in, in Indonesia, India, all over the place. And uh, they, they have no clue what Sunday school is. But if you say adult Bible class, they might understand what that is. And I think we should introduce them to Sunday school and the idea because we like that. We teach that. But uh, let's be faithful to that. 10 o'clock, breakfast in the morning, 930 to 10, not tomorrow morning, but Sunday morning, 930 to 10. And if you come show up tomorrow, you can help us with the carpet. We'd greatly appreciate that. But anyway, uh, we won't have breakfast for you, unfortunately. But we will on Sunday morning, 930 to 10, over the Activity Center. We're looking forward to that. And then 10 o'clock, our adult Bible class for children and adults. And I want to encourage you to be involved with those. They will help you. Uh, we have three adult Bible classes currently that are tremendous. One is in here, one in the Activity Center, and one in our old auditorium, which is Heritage Hall. And I want to encourage you to be a part of those. And then... Um, don't forget about service, 11 o'clock service, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. as well on New Year's Day. Uh, keep all that in mind, full schedule on New Year's Day. And then also Christmas mailbox is over there, and I'm seeing a couple letters still over there. And I want to encourage you to go by there and, uh, and uh, get your letters out, see if you have any letters. And because we're going to have to do away with the box here very soon, because, of course, we'll begin in January on Sunday. And then also 2023 pocket calendars. If you have not picked one up, I want to encourage you to go ahead and get one of those that are free of charge and help keep, you tra keep track of all the events coming on in your life. And then also winter ladies meeting. There's been several signed up already for that. That will be uh, not next week, but week after on January 12th. This is a great time for every lady in our church to to uh, be over in Heritage Hall 7 o'clock. There'll be a Bible study over there. They play games over there. They had refreshments, and it is really just top-notch, first-class uh, group, and there's usually 40, 50, 60 ladies. I don't know about 60, but 40 or 50, definitely, and they just have a great time over there and uh, just a sweet time of fellowship, and it's not a gossip session. Amen? They don't do gossiping over there, and uh, they don't do, uh, they don't, pro they, 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 they have a Bible study, and you will get encouragement from that. And I want to encourage you to sign up so they know how to meet to prepare for, okay? And then also, Saturation Saturday, our January Saturation Saturday will be uh, not this Saturday, but next January 6th. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to meeting everybody over in the Activity Center. And uh, Lord willing, we'll have some sausage biscuits, okay, in the Activity Center. And I want to encourage you to get there about 10 minutes early. We'll be leaving at 9.30, going out from 9.30 to 10.30 and canvassing our area with the gospel. And I believe that works, don't you? And uh, God has commanded us to do that, and let's be faithful in that area. And so keep that in mind, if you will. There's no sign-up sheet for that, but I do encourage you to come uh, that first uh, Saturday of January meeting at 9 30 okay and by the way raise your hand if you're thankful for the heat wave we're experiencing right now and what a blessing that is since we have had so much cold weather winter revival I want to encourage you church family to begin praying now for our winter revival Monday Tuesday Wednesday night seven o'clock each night 
during January, uh, we'll have Pastor Chris Hazelup from Statesville uh, be with us each night, and then also Andrew and Mary Beth Jones. They'll be doing our special singing each night. You don't want to miss it, and I want to encourage you to make plans to be here early, get a good seat, and we'll have meals prior each night to in our Heritage Hall. It'll be great meals. I know usually one night is always fried chicken, and we'll have other great meals Monday and Tuesday or Wednesday whenever we don't do fried chicken, but we'll have a great time. And I want to again, again be praying now for the meeting that God would bless in a tremendous way. We need to start off the year with revival. And we ha we'll have another one. You'll see our calendars on January 8th on Vision Sunday. We have three revivals scheduled this year, one in the winter, one in the spring, and one in the fall. And uh, I, I really want us to stay vibed up. And I want us to keep a constant state of revival in our hearts and minds. I believe our church has that, but I want to continue to stoke up the fire. When I was growing up, we built fires to stay warm in our home. We had a hot water, heater, hot water stove that would heat the water and heat the house. And we would have to build the fire. And uh, growing up, all grown up, build the fire. And yet we would have to go out there maybe an hour or two later and check on it. And maybe we call it stoking it up are chunking up the fire. Sometimes we refer to chunking it up, put some new wood on there, mess around with the coals a little bit, and make sure that fire was continuing to, to burn that wood, to keep that water circulating, keep that water hot. And we have to do that from time to time to keep revival burning in our soul. So I want to encourage you with that, okay? And then also one other uh, thing, and then we'll stand. Uh, couples night out. You'll see this on the calendar. I want to go ahead and start getting this out there to Lord willing to be in the bulletin. I think it's already in the bulletin, uh, but we'll have that in the bulletin. We'll have a sign-up sheet soon. This is a big event on Saturday, February 11th, the couples night out, and uh, we're going to have a great time. We'll have a big, wonderful meal here at the church, and we'll have a, some helps that will help you from the Word of God uh, in your marriage. Uh, you know, I don't know how long you've been married. Maybe it's one year, or maybe it's uh, 60 years. But however long you've been married, uh, may we never have this idea that, well, we're okay. Uh, may we always seek to improve in our marriages. Amen. And uh, this will be a great time of just, just, uh, just help to strengthen the marriages in our church. You may, your marriage may be perfect. And I want to encourage you to come help us. Maybe you'll rub off on us a little bit. And I'm joking, of course, but I want to encourage you to be faithful to that. And uh, keep that in mind, Saturday, February 11th at 6 o'clock. We're going to stand once again all over the building. And uh, we're going to sing this song. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of I Love to Tell the Story. We'll shake hands between 2 and 4 and the teens will be dismissed. Let's sing it out unto the Lord tonight on the first verse together as a mighty choir. I tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. It satisfies my longing as nothing else. Sing it now. Think about it. To tell the story will be my theme in glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his on the second. I love to tell the story. It seems that all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams I love. It did so much for me, and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell. The story to will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love. Amen. Turn around, leave your seat, welcome one another with a handshake and a smile. Greet one another tonight.
right, let's catch that last verse as you're making your way back to your seat. Sing it out unto the Lord tonight. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when it seems of glory, I sing the new, new song. Twill be the old that I have loved so long. Sing it now. I love to tell the story to will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Amen. Let's remain standing. Ushers, you come at this time, if you will, please. We're going to receive our offering tonight. And then we'll pray over the offering, and we'll have an offertory by Miss Beverly Smith on the organ. I know it'll be a blessing to you. It's a song, and a very special to her. And uh, and I think it'll be. A, I know it'll be a blessing. We want to receive our offering tonight. The Wednesday night offering always goes to what missions. missions. And I appreciate the eagerness. I love to hear you say that missions, like you mean it. And I appreciate that. And I know that you give to missions. We have. Uh, 38 currently that we are supporting and we're grateful for that just taking on two new ones and uh, we have one our missionaries Donnell uh, Donnell, I I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly to Australia and uh, as you know uh, we've mentioned I'm sure that uh, they came off the field back in the summer months and we talked to our deacons about uh, discontinuing them uh, at the first of the year we went ahead and continue to support them for six months as they continue to get reestablished back in the states um, but uh, but if we're not careful what will ha- I, I, I want I'll be honest with you can I share my heart with you just a second uh, we have a lot of missionaries and, and they're starting some of them are starting to come they're retiring if you will they're they're they don't want to use that word but they're coming off the field and they're doing pulpit supply and other things and, uh, and I want to continue to support them because I love them. I love every one of them, and I'm very grateful for what they do. But if we're not careful, we'll have uh, all of our missionaries becoming uh, not really doing mission work. And so we have to uh, have a balance there, and it's hard for a pastor because we want to be helpful for them. But at the same time, we, we have to support actual missionaries, people that are actually in the field because that's what it's going for. And so we're trying, you just have to be gracious and patient. You say, well, I think we ought to support them two years more. And somebody's going to say, well, I think we ought to drop them immediately. There's always, you know, in a church, you're always going to have, you know, 30 million. If you have 30 people, you're going to have 30 million opinions, you know. And that's just the way it is. And that's, and you've been very gracious. Nobody has said anything. But, um, but and I appreciate you allowing me to, to help us with that and, and our deacons as well. They're very gracious as well. But, uh, but we did support them six months after they came off the field. And as we've tried to do in some degree, every missionary, every missionary is different. And what they're, what they're rotating into is different. The times are different. So we'll try to take everything into consideration. But, uh, but we'll can stop, can stop supporting them. So we actually will have 37 as of January. And so now we'll begin working on taking on more at $200 a month and uh, this year. And so we're thankful for that. Let's pray, and uh, then you can be seated. Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to give to missions tonight. Thank you, Father, for a church that is mission-minded, Father, that desires to give to the mission department. And, Father, we ask that you bless each gift and giver. I know it's sacrificial giving, and I'm thankful for that. Father, help us to continue to do that this this new year as it comes into into our lives. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated.
Miss Beverly, appreciate that tonight. Psalms chapter 90. Appreciate all our instrumentalists, uh, the organ, the piano, and now we've got uh, two different guitars, a bass and acoustic, and we're grateful for all the instrumentalists that God has blessed us with. And I'm still having to give up on the orchestra, and I'm excited about... Uh, some violins and, and uh, clarinets and other things being a part of our worship services. And I believe, you say, Pastor, do you really believe that? Absolutely. I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know with who, but I believe the Lord will do that. Psalms chapter number 90 and verse number 1 is we're going to begin reading. Psalms chapter number 90. And again, it's so good to see each one. Thank you for being here tonight. Psalms chapter 90, we're grateful for those watching online as well. Psalms chapter number 90, and look with me in verse number 1. We're going to begin reading here in the Bible tonight. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. By the way, that's a good place to be, is dwell with the Lord. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever, thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Notice in verse 4, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with the flood, they are as, as they are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. By the way, there's no secrets with the Lord uh, as far as what's in your heart and what's in your mind. God knows that. I mean, there's nothing hid from the Lord. And sometimes I think in our minds we think, I'm hiding this, and you're not. And by the way, God has a way to, fi- show that, uh, to, to manifest that. God has a way to reveal that in perhaps a form of, of judgment. You know, there's a verse in the Bible uh, that talks about the fact that uh, be careful what you say because a bird could take that and dis- distribute that saying that you thought no one heard. Verse number 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Verse 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. I wonder if that's where that old hymn, I'll Fly Away, came from. You think so, maybe? Verse 11, Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. And verse 12, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Father, we love you tonight, and I pray that you'd use me for just a few moments, Father, this last service of the year. And Father, I pray that you'd use me for to be a blessing, encouragement to our church family. I pray that you'd speak to my heart tonight, give me clarity, thought, mind, and we'll thank you for what you do and through the service tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you for just a few moments on the subject before you evaluating our lives, evaluating our lives during the the first, or excuse me, during the last few days of the year as we currently are, I think it is wise for us to consider our lives and what we did the last 365 days. I think it's good to kind of re, kind of assess where where we are, what we've done in the last 365 days, because for many Christians, not every Christian, but for many Christians, this reflection when we when we think about the last 365 days. It will become a challenge for us to accomplish more in the year to come. I don't know about you, but when I think about 2022, the last 300 and, well, you do the math, it's not quite 365, but, you know, 360 what, whenever. Uh, If you do the math, uh, or if you do it on New Year's Eve, uh, look back and reevaluate how much you've done for the Lord. I don't know about you, but that, I don't look back and think, well, I did a lot for the Lord. Uh, I don't look back and say, wow, man, I just think I gave too much to the Lord. I don't think I say, well, I knocked on way too many doors for the Lord. I look back and say, you know what? I think I could have done more. I want to try to do better this next year. And that's the way it is almost in every aspect of life. When we have a New Year's resolution, I know everybody doesn't do that because 
we found out we 90% of the time we can't keep them. And uh, so we just say, you know, forget it. Uh, but the truth of the matter is a lot of times um, when we, when we re- evaluate our lives at the end of the year, a lot of times it'll help challenge us to do more uh, the next year and have that first day of the year, that new year, as a, as a launching point to do something for the Lord. I was reading and studying this, and I, I thought it was interesting I, 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 as I was studying it. I, I never thought about this before. But Psalms chapter 90, this chapter that we're in tonight, is the oldest psalm. This is what I read. The oldest psalm uh, in, in, in the Psalms, the 150 largest, cha- largest book of the Bible, uh, 150 chapters. Psalms 90 is the oldest psalm and was written by Moses. And it gives us a reminder of the lives of the children of Israel right after they failed to place their faith in the Lord uh, at Kadesh Barnea. Do y'all remember the story when they, the children of Israel, uh, God sent the plagues into Egypt and God allowed them to leave Egypt and cross through the Red Sea. God uh, parted the ways for them. God blessed them and helped them in so many different ways. And they got to the edge of the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. In other words, it was a very productive and fruitful land. There was no McDonald's to go through there. There was no Chick-fil-A. There was, I'm trying to get everybody to, in, in, in on this illustration. It was, there was no cookout. There was no Dario there back then. And so they had to live off the goat's milk and the land, uh, the grapes and the fruits and the, 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 the soil, how, how, how fertile the soil was. And so this, was, this land of promise, this land of Canaan was very fruitful and productive. And God said, I'm going to give it to you. But it was already inhabited. Do you remember that? And at Kadesh Barnea, they sent in spies. Joshua and Caleb were one of the, one, two of those. And they sent in those ten spies, and they spied out the land. They came back after about 40 days, and um, Joshua and Caleb said, Listen, God's told us we can get this land. It's a great, productive land. Let's do it. Now listen, we're going to have to get our swords out. We're going to have to overtake it. But God has promised us he would do it. Let's trust the Lord. And the other spies, what did they do? They said, oh, they're giants over there. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can do it. And they, that that negative, that negative, that negative uh, perspective just melted the heart of the whole nation. It it isn't interesting like that, that one, one person can speak a kind word, but if you get one negative word, that negative just overcomes the pause, doesn't it? And that's what happened there at Kadesh Barnea. And God said, as a result of your lack of faith, as a result of your unbelief in me, you're going to wander in the wilderness for the rest of your lives. And everyone 20 years old, uh, everyone that was over 20 years old would, would wander aimlessly uh, in, the, in the wilderness and they would die there in the wilderness. Everyone, of course, younger would go into the promised land. And... Moses is writing again. God is inspiring Moses what to write here in Psalms chapter 90. But this is writing from, uh, from Moses as God's using him to pin this down. And he's reminiscing, he's, he's, he's uh, talking about in chapter 90 uh, when the children of Israel uh, did not trust the Lord at Kadesh Barnea. And so therefore they had the wrath of God, the sentence of God upon them to wander aimlessly and to die in the wilderness. I don't know about you, but just to wonder for 40 years would be death enough in my mind to have no purpose of life but just to wander around. To spend the rest of your life with no purpose, no goals, no achievements, just to wander in the wilderness for 40 years and knowing that you would die somehow, some way in that wilderness situation as a result of your lack of faith. That's what Moses is writing on. And I want us to pinpoint verses 9, 10, 11, and 12 mainly and talk about several things uh, to help us evaluate our lives and make spiritual improvements. And you'll see how it kind of uh, ties in, I believe. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to notice the sentence of our life. Again, we're talking about evaluating our life 
Okay, uh, ending up this year of 2022, uh, getting ready to approach a new year, a new season, a new journey of our life in 2023. And I want you to notice the first thing, the sentence of our life. Look back in verse number 9. Look back in verse number 9. The Bible says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. Again, as a reminder, uh, this is a result of, or as a result of their, the children of Israel's lack of faith, the children of Israel were sentenced to spend the rest of their lives just wandering in the wilderness. This was the wrath of God. This was their sentence. This was their punishment of wandering and eventually death in the wilderness as a result of their lack of faith. Now, here's the application. Real quickly tonight, today, those who choose not to place their faith in Christ have a sentence upon their lives, don't they? Those who have never trusted in Jesus Christ have a sentence of death. The wages, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages or the price or the punishment, or can we say here, the sentence upon a person who has never trusted Jesus as their Savior, their sentence, the wages of sin is death, is physical death and, 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 and spiritual death and separation from God for all eternity. John chapter 3 verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. There's a promise right there. If we believe on Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. We're going to live forever. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but it says, but the wrath of God abideth on him. In other words, those who do not trust in Jesus as their Savior have the sentence of God, the wrath of God abiding upon him, just like the children of Israel had the sentence and the wrath of God of wandering aimlessly in the wilderness for 40 years because they did not trust in the Lord. You and I that or anybody who does not place their faith in the Lord, their trust in the Lord as their Savior, has the sentence of death and eternity and hell upon them. Now, for those of us who are saved, which is, I think, most of us here tonight probably, most that are saved, if you're not saved, you can be saved. I'm grateful for that. But if you're here and you are saved, we sentence ourselves here's the application we sentence ourselves with wandering aimlessly through life without purpose when we fail to trust in God's plan trust in his will or his word for our lives you ever heard anybody say i'm just trying to find myself have not had right, is everybody awake tonight is it, would everybody say amen on the count of 3 i'm just Okay, I didn't say three, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a, a little life sprouting every once in a while. Okay, uh, I know you're tired. We're all uh, getting over our, we're, we're, we've gained about 10 pounds in the last three days, I think. And uh, we're getting over our sugar coma and our, the tragic uh, understanding that I am weighing a lot more than I did three days ago. And uh, we're in a mess. I understand. Hey, listen, and uh, let's have a new resolution of many, of many sorts, Okay. But uh, if, you're, if you're awake, would you say amen? One, two, three. Amen. Wow. Well, maybe you've already woke up. Maybe you just woke up. I don't know. But if you are, uh, welcome tonight. For those of us who are saved, we sentence ourselves, just like the, the children of Israel did not trust in God, so they had the sentence of wandering when we do not trust in the Lord and His Word, that's what happens to us. We wander in our lives. I haven't heard again the phrase, I haven't heard, I'm still trying to find myself, but it just grieved me. I don't know, it just grieved me uh, when, I heard, when I would hear a 30 or 40 year old person say that, like, I'm just trying, I don't know where I am, I don't know who I am, I'm just trying to find myself. And I'm thinking, man, there's so much out there, there's so much purpose in life. There's so much to live for if you know Jesus is your Savior. There's so much. Man, it is a daily task for me, uh, and I'm not, the Lord knows my heart, I'm not trying to pin a rose on my lapel. I'm just simply saying, it is a, for, for, the, for the Christian who's saved, who's trying to live for Jesus Christ and trying to follow God in His Word, it is a everyday challenge and purpose to try to please the Lord and knowing that you fall short of His glory, knowing that you fall short every, almost all, every single day we're falling short and every single day getting up and saying, Jesus, this is a new day that you give me and I'm going to 
do my best to live for you every single day. And it's just a challenge and it gives me purpose in life to please my Savior, to please my Creator. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that God uh, gives us purpose in our lives. But we have to trust Him. We have to place our faith in Him. And when we do not trust in His Word, when we do not implement, apply God's Word into our life, and we just kind of do life as we want to, we will begin wandering in life. What should I do? What is life all about? Well, if you'll open the Word of God, read it, apply it, implement it, you will find much purpose in living for the Lord. So the sentence of life. Number two, notice the speaking of our life. Also in verse number nine, it says, For all of our days, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. Notice this phrase. We spend our years as a tale that is told. We spend our years as a tale that is told. That is told. Now, as the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, they could only speak of their lives as a tale that was told. Think about it. They couldn't look to the future because they didn't have much of one. They couldn't say, Well, sweetheart, I can't wait till we get to the promised land to build that house, that two story house with the garage and the white picket fence, the two acres so our kids could run around. They would never have one, and they knew it. Those 20 and above, they would never get that. They knew that that sentence was upon them because of their lack of faith and trusting in the Lord and His will for their lives. They couldn't trust Him. And so now the sentence of, of death and wandering aimlessly was upon them because they couldn't trust the Lord. And now they are just simply, uh, their, their lives is just a tale that has already been told. They had nothing to look forward to. And can I say that may we not spend the rest of our lives looking back uh, as, as a tale, but look forward to how God can use us and what can be done for the Lord. I, and listen, I'm all for looking back and remembering the past victories, remembering the past uh, things God, that God did in our lives. I think that is very important. But if you continue to keep your eyes on the rearview mirror instead of where you're going ahead, pretty soon you're going to find yourself up against a tree or in a ditch. You're going to wreck because you can't constantly look back. You've got to look forward if you're going to go forward. You've got to have your eyes ahead about what you believe God can do. May we never spend our years and say, well, you know, God did this and God did that and and I believe the, 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 the best years are behind us. No, no! Who told you that? Where, when did you... How, who, where did you read that? The best years are behind us. What, who, don't ever, never believe that lie from, from Satan. The best years are still to come. I believe that we are the generation where we may see Jesus coming in the rapture of the church. The best days are still ahead for Temple Baptist Church. The best days are still ahead. I'm excited now more than I've ever been. Listen, I'm thankful for what's been done in the past. I'm thankful for the years behind us. I'm thankful for how God has brought us this far. But don't waste 2023 as a, as a tale that's been told. Let's say, look what God can do. Let's, let's think about, let's dream big. Let's have plans for the future. And if God doesn't do them, then we at least we died trying. But let's not just spend our years as a tale that was just told. And by the way, there's another application there that others will truly tell our tale as we do theirs. You know, we, we, we tell this tale tonight of the children of Israel who just simply wandered aimlessly in the winters. And we tell that tale of them tonight. And we, we learn that and we take application to that. And the truth of the matter is, though, your life and my life you can say all you want to about your life, but your life is a tale that others will tell. <laughs> you, 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 I'll give you this scripture, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2. It says, Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. You know why? Because others can see if you're genuine. Others can see if you're real. Others can see and evaluate your life. And if you're a good person, if you're a godly person, then others will evaluate that, and they will tell it. But you don't have to proclaim that with your own lips. God says, I don't want you to go around proclaiming your own goodness. If you're just to be genuine and real and spirit-filled and spirit-led, 
and do your best to please the Lord, uh, you, will, you will have that reputation. Others will tell of how God is blessing your life. Now, notice the third thing, and we're really trying to get to the last one, which is the main point. The shortness. The, the third thing, I want you to notice the shortness of our life. Look in verse number 10. This is kind of, uh, this is kind of um, really hits home here tonight. Verse 10, the days of our years are three score years and 10. In other words, 70 years old. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. I think that's regarding death and how short life is. Does everybody remember the, the, the book of James in chapter number 4, verse number 14, where the Bible says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? Oh, that's a message right there in itself, isn't it? What is your life? What is your life all about? I hope that people would say that your life is about Jesus. Would, would people tell a tale about you when you pass from this life to the next? Would they remember how much you love golf? Would they remember how much you love shopping? Or would they say about you, the tale that is told about so-and-so, they were a godly person. They were a godly person. They helped their family. They led their family in the paths of righteousness. And can I say that our lives are so quickly. What is your life? The Bible says what it is. It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. I don't do a lot of cooking. Most of you know that. If I did, you wouldn't want my cooking. If it's my time to cook, which is very few, very, very far, few between, I would rather go spend $10 at a restaurant than I would getting out things. I, can, I just can't cook. I can use the microwave pretty good. I know how to use that. And... Uh, and I can, uh, that's about all. But I, 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 I've noticed vapor. You, ever, you see the vapor off the, is something, maybe uh, something's boiling on the stove. And there's that vapor that goes up. God says, that's your life. It's a vapor. Think about that. Your life is very short. My life is very short. It gives, look back again in verse number four. For a thousand years, Moses is writing as God tells him what to write. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. A thousand years is like just, just yesterday to the Lord. Wow. A thousand it kind of puts a little bit, just a tiny bit of perspective on eternity. Wow. Our time is not God's time. <laughs> what is eternity to us is, is you, know, you know, nothing to the Lord. Wow. And think about that for a minute. But our life is, just appears for a very short time, just like that vapor. I mean, just maybe one second, two seconds, and then it's gone. Our life is very short, and may we consider how short life is and conduct ourselves accordingly. Which brings us to our last thought, for number four, the success of our life. Now, this is what I really want to zero in on tonight. Look in verse 12. We're evaluating our life. We're evaluating the sentence of our life. What happens when we don't trust the Lord? Well, if you're not saved and you don't trust God for salvation, we spend eternity in, de in hell. If we are saved and we don't trust the Lord and His will and His way in our lives according to His word, we just we have no purpose in life. The speaking of our life. I, I, I don't want my life to be just a tale that is told. I, 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 want, to, uh, I want to have dreams. I want to, hey, listen, some of you are maybe in your 80s. Hey, listen, trust God for big things in your life. Trust God for big things at Temple Baptist Church. Say, Lord, I want to be like Simeon. I want, to, I want you to leave me here long enough to where I can see the new building program. Yeah, listen, and Lord, I, I, want to do, I want to be a part of something. And then the shortness of our life. The shortness of of our life, and then the success. Look in verse number 12. If you don't have this underlined or scored, I want you to do that. It says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Most people desire to be successful. Would you agree with that? I think most people desire to be successful. Now, why they want to be successful is, is very, 
<laughs> varies significantly, doesn't it? I mean, some people what want to be successful for themselves, and, uh, and, and I think that's the most of the world perspective. They want to be successful for themselves. But listen, look in verse number 12 again. When we number our days, when we number our days, when we realize life is like a vapor, when we realize that we're soon cut off and we fly away, when we realize that I, my life, can, in God's perspective, is just a very, very, very short time, when I number my days, we realize that our life here is very short, wherein our lives in eternity is forever, which should cause us to desire to be successful for God and eternity rather than here and now. Is everybody with me? Let me read that one more time because I'm reading it. When we number our days, when we realize, you know what, I'm not going to be here forever. I might make it to 75. I'm doing all I can to eat as much candy and all of the... I got some peanut butter balls last night. All those are to die for. And I might. I don't know. I, I hope not. I'm joking, of course. But those are so good. Oh, my soul. And, uh, you know, all the, the good stuff. I'm worried about dying now. I'm going to take a break from those things. But when we number our days, when we consider, you know what? I could die tomorrow. When I consider that, we realize that life is here for a very short time in comparison to eternity, which is forever. So often we lose sight of that. We, 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 just, we get so busy in the here and now, being successful now, and we, and we forget how short our lives are and how long uh, we, we really can't even put a time on it in eternity because eternity is forever. And we realize that eternity is forever. My time now is here so short then it should create a desire in our heart and mind to be successful for God and eternity rather than just here and now. And I want to, I want to encourage you this next year to be successful in the eyes of the Lord. Instead of successful in your own eyes or in the eyes of others, become uh, successful, be driven to be su su succeed in the eyes of the Lord because He is our Creator. He is our Savior. If you're saved tonight, would you say amen? I'm thankful for that. We have something, someone to live for, and we have someone to please. He is also one day going to be our judge. 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That is where Christians stand that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that, that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Sinners stand before the great white throne. Saved people stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And God will one day be our judge. That's why I want to be successful in the eyes of the Lord because I want him, as Paul mentioned, to give a, a crown so that I may lay at his feet. I want to become successful not in the eyes of man but in the eyes of the Lord. And we, we can become successful in the eyes of God by, look in verse 12, look at the last part of verse number 12, by applying our hearts unto wisdom. Let's look, at the, look up here one more time. We're evaluating our life. If I, trust, I, 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 if I don't trust in God, if I don't put my faith in Him, then I'm just going to be, I'm going to have this sentence upon myself of just wandering aimlessly in life. But, if I, I, but I, I need to trust in God and His Word and apply, implement these truths into my life. And then uh, the speaking of our life and what's going to be told about my life. And I, I, listen, I, I, want, I want to dream big and I, I don't want to just tell uh, what is my life has already been and what I've done. I want to dream about the things ahead and the shortness of life. We've got to realize that, listen, I'm not going to be here forever, but I am going to live for eternity through Christ Jesus as my Savior. And I want to be successful in the eyes of the Lord, because He is my Creator, He's my Savior, my Redeemer, and we can become successful, I believe, in the eyes of the Lord by doing three things. And I close with this. Three things, how we can be successful in the eyes of the Lord, and that is one, by establishing spiritual priorities. Listen carefully. This year, I want to encourage you to not try to be successful. Listen, if you make $3 million in your business next year, I rejoice with you. 
I am thankful for that. I, I think that we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those that weep, as the Bible says, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, but listen, let's not aim at trying to live, be successful for ourselves, but for the Lord. And really, when we prioritize God in our lives and we put God first, everything else will fall into place. You say, how do you know that? Jesus said it, Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? The things that you need. And God says, I want, you to, I want you to put me first, God says. And may we establish spiritual priorities in our life. May we prioritize God first. May He, as Colossians 1.18 says, may God have <coughs> the preeminence in our lives. In everything we do, at what, in our conversations, may God be put first. That doesn't mean every single conversation uh, that, that has to be about the Lord. It doesn't mean that. You can talk about fishing and hunting and golfing and shopping, whatever. You can talk about those things, but may your mind start begin thinking, how can I please God? Have Him as your priority in what you say and what you do, what you wear, who your friends are. May God, may God be in the, in the uppermost part of our thoughts and, and beating in our hearts every moment, thinking, how can I be successful in the eyes of God? I've got to put Him first and who I'm around. I've got to put Him first. Is God pleased? Am I successful in the eyes of God by doing this? Action or saying this or going here. Putting God first. Putting God first. And then not only by establishing spiritual priorities, but we can succeed, I believe, in the eyes of the Lord by making spiritual investments. By making spiritual investments. Can I encourage you to invest in the work of the ministry? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Invest in the work of the ministry. Giving to missions, giving to the building fund, the work of the ministry, giving our tithes and offering unto the Lord. That is investing. It, it, by the way, you realize that when you give unto the work of the Lord, when you put that 10% in, when you give to the building, the youth and the building and the mission fund, you realize that when you give that, it is an investment that is bringing eternal rewards if you give with your heart. Amen? It is an investment. It is never a loss when you give with all your heart unto the Lord. Never! It is the greatest investment that we can possibly make. Invest in the work of the ministry because that, when you give, that is where your heart will get tied into. And then invest not only in the work of the ministry, but invest in the ministry of others. Invest in other people's lives. You know what we're trying to do tonight between 5.30 and 6.30? We came back a little bit early. But you know what we're trying to do during that time frame? We're trying to go out and we're trying to get... Other, we're trying to see other see people saved. We're trying our best to, to, to throw the seed and trust God will do a work through that seed in their hearts and bring them to Christ and bring them in fellowship with other believers if they are saved. And, 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 and uh, we're trying to invest in the lives of others. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that in your life in, in, in making spiritual investments in the work of the ministry and investing in the lives of others through a class or the choir or whatever that may be. Invest in others. And then lastly, allowing spiritual influences. Allowing spiritual influences in your life. What you, what you, who you are, and or excuse me, who you are around is, is who you become. The, the friends that you are, you, the old saying you, soon, you are or soon will be who you will be around. And there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, we are all influenced. Uh, you, you, you and me are made up. I am made up. I've got a little bit of my fifth grade teacher in me, Mrs. Fish. She had a major impact in my life. Major impact in my life. I, I, my mom. I've got a little bit of my mom in me. I've got a little bit of my dad in me. I've got a little bit of my wife in me. You see, all these people have influenced my life. I got a little bit of all, a lot of pastors influence in my life. I've got a little bit of Tootie Farrington in me because I've been around him quite a bit. It's good influence, just in case you're wondering. 
I don't know what you said, but I'll laugh with you because I trust you. <laughs> Listen, I've got a little bit of Robert Church in me because I've been around him for the last six years. I've got some of you invested. You've invested your life. You've poured your life in me. And I made up. Every one of us are made up of people that have invested in our lives and influenced our lives. Really. And I want to encourage you to influence others for the cause of Christ. Be a blessing and encouragement to others. Don't come up to others and constantly nagging them and, and being pessimistic in their lives. Be an encouragement. Uplift them. The Bible says over and over and over in the New Testament, edify one another. What does that mean? Build up one another. You know what we like to do? Tear down one another so we are built up in our own selves. But God help us, may the Lord help us to build up one another. So let's review and we'll be done. Evaluating our life. There's a sentence on our lives, and I'm talking specifically now for you and I that are saved. If we do not, if we fail to trust in God's plan and His will and His word, if we fail to trust Him, as He tells us over and over, we, that we really sentence ourselves to wandering aimlessly in our own thoughts and our own ways, and then we find ourselves messed up and everything else and wondering what happened. And God said, you should have trusted my way. You should have waited upon the Lord. And then speaking of our life, and then shortness. Our life is so short, and then success of our life. I want us to be, I want in my personal life, I don't want us, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want, you know, I don't want my mindset to be, oh yeah, that pastor bowls down there. Yeah, he's a great pastor. That's, that's, if, if that is my motive for pastoring Temple Baptist Church, I might as well go home, because that's the wrong motive. And my work at the judgment seat of Christ will be what? Burned up. But I want my motive to be, I want to succeed in the eyes of the Lord. I want to succeed in the eyes of the Lord. How can we succeed in the eyes of our Creator, our Savior? I believe by establishing spiritual priorities, putting God first in every aspect of our lives, making God preeminent in our home, in our heart, in our lives, allowing spiritual influences the house of God, more and more godly people, getting around godly people, allowing others to influence their life. And by the way, that goes hand in hand with not allowing wrong influences in my life. And then also making spiritual investments, pouring my, my life into others spiritually, pouring what God gives me back into the work of the Lord. Our days are short. Our days are short. Would you agree with that? God says it. Our life is like a vapor. Our life is short. Eternity is long. Would you agree with that? It never ends. That's long. And may we seek to be successful this year, now more than ever before, in the eyes of the Lord. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and not saved, you've never trusted in Jesus as your Savior. That ought to be a wonderful night to get saved by placing your faith and trust in Him. That he died for you. Would you come? Would you accept Him as your Savior tonight? I wonder if you're here tonight and maybe you are saved, but maybe the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart about something tonight. And maybe you want to come around the altar and say, Lord, I want to be successful this year now more than ever as we close out this service. Lord, I want to succeed in your eyes, not man's. I want to find uh, I want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Let's all stand together. Musicians begin playing. As we stand with heads bowed and eyes are closed all over the building, would you come tonight? If the Lord has spoke to your heart about whatever the need may be, would you come as they play softly tonight through the invitational song? We're not singing tonight, just simply playing through this song of invitation. Would you come? We're in no hurry tonight. As folks pray, how about it? Would you pray right there in your seat, right there where you are? Lord, help me to be successful in your eyes, not my own, not in the lives of others. It's not about them, it's between me and the Lord. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that. Sometimes we fail. We live in such a successful 
oriented society that we, we, we get wrapped up in that mindset that I've got to succeed, I've got to be at the top, I've got to make this person think I am making it well. I've got to think, I've got to make my children think that we're prospering. It's not always the case. Father, we love you tonight. Help us to learn to be successful in your eyes. Father, help us to be reminded that our life is short, not through a death or anything like that, Father, if it be your will, but just by reading your word and meditating upon it and thinking really and realizing our life's short, eternity's long. Help us to live and be successful in your eyes for eternity and not for ourselves, not for others. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated tonight. I want to thank you for being faithful and uh, your faithfulness during this busy time of the year. We have a couple of different prayer requests, and I'll be brief tonight uh, with these. And the, but we will also take outspoken prayer requests if there's any of those tonight. Uh, let's do continue to pray for all of our shut-ins, that the Lord would help them, and uh, it, especially during this time. Uh, this Christmas season, holiday season. And then also, let's pray for all of our missionaries. Likewise, let's pray for America. Our country needs our prayers, our leaders, uh, state, local, federal. And then also, let's pray for our services on Sunday that God will bless in a tremendous, tremendous way. And then also, let's pray for Miss Wanda Michaels. And uh, then also, Randy Smith. It's good to see Randy tonight. Randy's having a lot of uh, just needs in his life mentally. Uh, physically really as well and uh, he's asking us to really pray for him so I really want you to pray for Randy and I know he very much appreciate that Ryan Marlowe let's continue to pray for him he's made a lot of progress so we're thankful for that Sterling Kettner's wife let's continue to pray for her Nancy Collier she continues to recover Ruby Kane let's pray for uh, Miss Patricia Lawrence Miller uh, let's continue uh, Miss Patricia said he's about the same I spoke to her just briefly before the service, so pray for them, if you will, please. Bunny Manning's grandson, Kinston Adams, with health issues. Melanie Williamson, with her cancer treatment. It's good to see Savannah James tonight. And uh, let's give them a hand. Congratulations to Hannah and Jalen. And uh, that's, a, that's a blessing to see them in church. And, uh, and I appreciate them so very much bringing Savannah to church. And, uh, Lord willing, uh, we'll have a baby dedication sometime soon. We've we got several new babies in the church, Savannah and Hudson and um, River and more to come. And so we're grateful for these. And then also, let's pray uh, also for uh, Livia Morton's grandmother with cancer. Let's pray for Charles Poteet. He texted me earlier today and, uh, and gave me an update. I think his shoulder is dislocated. I think that's the correct uh, wording there. He's at the Novant Health uh, facility, a rehabilitation facility. His shoulder is fractured. I apologize. His shoulder is fractured. Uh, a CT, CT scan showed that. And he'll be there at the Forsyth, excuse me, Novant Rehabilitation Center. They're off Stratford Road for uh, probably till January, early in January. So pray for him. And uh, Lord willing, I'll try to go by and see him tomorrow. Greg Weatherman's sister, he gave me a report on her. She had a procedure with her cancer and making good progress. So we thank the Lord for that. Norm Casto and uh, Norm and Joyce Casto. Uh, Norm sent me a, uh, called me and I missed the call. He left me a voicemail that uh, Miss Joyce is going through uh, some health issues. And so uh, they were going to the urgent care, I think at 7.30 this evening. So they were not gonna be able to be here. So pray for her, Norm. Continue to pray for him with his heart situation. Barbara Falls, continue to remember her with a pro broken pelvic bone that she would heal up soon. Gary Bartley, this is friends of Neil and Janice. Uh, Spain and I continue to remember them. Betty Potts, as she continues to recover, I spoke with her last week on the phone. She's doing fine. Uh, Brother Holly, again, with the coronavirus, I continue to pray for him. And, and uh, he's hoping to be back Sunday with all of that behind him. And, of course, he'll test. I think he said he would test and make sure that he was good before he comes back. But uh, continue to pray for him. Dot Adams with cancer. Uh, she's going through the first uh, uh, stages of um, understanding what it is and what is all involved and the treatment ideas and all of that. So very beginning stages of it. Uh, far as the far as the um, far as the 
treatment is concerned. So let's pray for her, if you will, as well. Do we have any outspoken prayer requests tonight? We'll start over here. Miss Hannah. Okay, so, okay, so Paige uh, is sick, and her, some of her girls have been sick and passing different things along the last several weeks, and we've missed them, of course, so pray for her and her family. Anybody else? Okay, Miss Linda. Okay, so pray for Tootie's test coming up in January. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Miss Ann Jackson. Amen. Well, prayer can go where you can't. God ha God can. You know, I'm reminded of Mary. She said, how can this be? You know, I don't know a man. And God, the angel says, for with God, for man, these things are impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. And God can. Let's pray for Miss Ann with her children. That God would work in their heart. Anybody, Miss Patricia? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. So praise the Lord for that good report from Miss Patricia's son. Anyone else tonight over here? Okay, I'm going to go slow. Okay, Jalen. Amen. 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 Jalen, appreciate that. Praise. I, I, I love hearing all these praise reports. It's good. Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to go slow. Okay. All right, good to see everybody tonight. Thank you for these prayer requests. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I won't ask you to come. I know many of you are so tired. And let's pray where we are and, uh, and ask God to help these needs tonight, as many as we can remember. And it, God, we can't remember all of them, but God can. And so let's take them to the throne room tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for your blessings upon us. You are so good to us. You're so good to me. I was thinking yesterday, spending time with my wife's family. You've been so good to me, not only in my, uh, my, my family, my side of the family, but also my wife's family. Father, you've blessed me so much, and I'm so grateful. you blessed me not only with good families, uh, blood families and marriage families, but, Father, you blessed me with a good church family. And I'm grateful for all of our people. Father, thank you for those who are watching online. Thank you for those who are here. I know it's such a busy season. Father, I'm thankful for your blessings upon us. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you, Father, for these praise reports. Thank you for those that, that have mentioned different things that you've done for them and, and how you've blessed and helped them in many areas. We're grateful for that. Father, I pray tonight that you would help every one of these needs, the outspoken, the unspoken. Father, the, the prayer requests have been read off. Father, I pray that you administer to each one of these. Answer them according to your will intervene that you would work and move father we know that you with god all things are possible and father i pray that you would help us to trust you put place our faith in you that when we can't you can if it's your will and father i pray that you would help our missionaries all over the world our, our country uh, father israel father our shut-ins 
I pray that you bless our services coming up Sunday. I pray for your power, your presence, your protection, your blessings in every way. And we'll trust you for great things. Thank you for this great year that you bless us with. 2022 has been a great year. And I pray that you would bless 2023 even more so. And we'll trust you for these things. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together. Thank you for coming tonight and being faithful to our service tonight. And uh, we're grateful that you're here. And I want to encourage you to turn around, shake hands, greet one another with a smile and a handshake, and thank them for coming. And uh, we do have a room over in the educational building. If anyone has time, you would like to help us. We've got to move out a lot of the uh, things from the, uh, we've got a little closet over there in the educational building. In order to put that carpet down, we've got to move all that stuff out. So if you have five or ten minutes that you'd like to help us with that, let me know on your way out, okay? I love you. God bless you. You're dismissed. We'll see you next year or Sunday. God bless you.